Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my best and worst luxury designer purchases. So recently I've been seeing this video all over YouTube. Most recently I saw Alexandria Garza do it. So it really inspired me because I really love the way that she explained why she liked something, why she didn't like something. So I thought that I would make this video and share with you my personal best and worst luxury designer purchases. So hopefully it will give you guys some helpful information if you guys were looking into any of these items and thinking about purchasing them. I love watching these videos because I find them very informative. And before I hop into the video, I quickly wanted to thank Vincero for sponsoring this portion of the video. I've mentioned Vincero a couple of times in my videos before. They make these beautiful, high quality, luxurious looking watches at a very, very affordable price. All of the Vincero watches are handmade by multiple artisans. And my particular watch is called the Eros Mesh Watch. And it is in this beautiful, Beautiful, versatile rose gold shade that I feel goes with everything you can mix and match it I typically wear a lot of gold jewelry and I feel like this blends in with my jewelry collection perfectly I like to mix it with gold I also wear it with my wedding ring and wedding band which is platinum so I love the look of mixed metals and I like that you can dress this up or dress this down because the band is completely interchangeable so you do have the option of switching out the band if you wanted to and I just think it's such a classic and luxurious timepiece that you will have in your collection for years and years to come and it's super affordable. This one is $129 and Vincero was nice enough to offer my subscribers an exclusive discount. So if you use the code Nikki15 at checkout, it will get you 15% off your order. So if you guys are interested in checking out Vincero and their beautiful collection of watches, I'm going to link their information in my description box below. So just like Alex Garza, I decided to start off with my worst category first so we can leave the best for last, if you will. So the first item that I wanted to share with you guys, and a lot of you might actually be really surprised about this, but it is my Chanel Coco Handle Bag. Now, I have to admit this bag is gorgeous. I love the color, I love the construction of it, I love the versatility of it. You can wear it over the shoulder, you can wear it crossbody, you can just hold the top handle like this, you can wear it in the crook of your arm. I also went with the aged lambskin leather and the magenta lizard handle. So it is a very resilient bag in terms of scratching and getting dirty and all that kind of stuff. It's in perfect condition since I bought it. And I also love that it has the brushed gold hardware on it. It makes it a little bit more versatile so I can mix it with different colored metals. The problem with this bag is I feel like for the amount of money I spent on it, I do not get as much wear out of it as I would like to. I feel like the style and structure of the bag is a classic, but the color is something that only works during a particular time of the year. You can only wear it with certain colors and outfits. It's not something that I can just throw on with absolutely everything and anything and have it look amazing. So that's the downfall with this bag. I do really love the cocoa handle style. The strap is also removable so you can take this off completely and you can use it kind of as like an oversized clutch bag if you wanted to. You can fit a ton of stuff in here and I like how it's nicely compartmentalized. That for me is really important in a good bag. So my advice for you guys if you are in the market for a cocoa handle bag or just an expensive handbag in general, really think about the color. I knew that it was going to be a little bit difficult to mix uh, pink into my wardrobe, but I just love this bag so much that I decided to get it anyway, but I'm still very sad that I'm not able to wear it as much as I would love to. So that's the reason why I put it in my worst category. The next disappointing item in my worst category are these Stuart Weitzman mules that I literally wore maybe two maximum three times. I bought these last summer and I was looking for like a tan kind of skin colored mule that I could wear in the spring and summertime with a ton of different outfits. And I thought that they would be very, very versatile. They looked comfortable, but the fact of the matter is I just have not been reaching for them as much as I would have liked to. I have a couple pairs of similar sandals that have the same style. It's like an open toe at the front and it has a higher vamp, but the heel is much 
much lower. So when I'm looking for a casual kind of sandal to wear with a maxi dress or a summer dress or a maxi skirt i usually go with those sandals instead of these and those sandals were way less expensive than these ones so that's why i'm really really sad that i spent a ton of money on these considering that i've only worn them less than a handful of times and to be honest i don't see myself wearing them anytime in the near future and i'm probably going to put them up for sale another item that i am super super disappointed that I have to put it in this worst category because I was looking for this item for such a long time and the amount of money I spent on it was just stupid. But in all fairness, I was trying to find a very similar style for this item on pre-loved websites and even vintage ones were ridiculously priced and it didn't make any sense to get a vintage so i decided to get it brand new and again for the amount of times that i wore this it's just not worth it so the item that i'm talking about is my chanel belt this is a chain belt it's actually beautiful i love it i feel like it's such a classic i will definitely have it in my wardrobe for years and years it has these little charms that hang on it that spell out chanel and there's a bunch of other little charms on it there's a cc on the edge of the belt and the hardware is kind of that silvery gold shade so it does go with everything it is very versatile the main reason i got this was to wear it around the waist but for the price it just seemed really out there to spend that kind of money on something that i would just be able to wear one way so the sales lady actually showed me a plethora of different ways that you can wear this belt so you can can actually wear it around the neck like a necklace you can also wrap it around the wrist a few times to make it into like a chunky bracelet so that is what kind of sold me on this belt and justified the hefty price tag but if i'm completely honest with you guys i haven't worn it around the neck i haven't worn it around my hand and the only way that i would wear this belt is around my waist but obviously since i am almost six months pregnant now i will not be wearing this for a very very long time it's not just that i can't wear it when i am pregnant that bothers me it just even when i wasn't pregnant i felt like i couldn't wear it with everything so that has been really really disappointing because i love this belt i would love to wear it more but again i don't want to overdo it i don't want to wear it too much and i'm sad that i don't wear it in the other ways that you could wear it i just feel like when i wear it as a necklace it kind of looks a little too mature on me and it doesn't really suit my style so yeah that's why i had to put this in the worst category and i wouldn't even know what to suggest to you guys to be honest because a belt like this on the real real for example is not that much cheaper than to get a brand new so if you do really really love this belt and maybe you do see yourself wearing it in the other ways that i mentioned then maybe it is worth it for you but looking back i probably could have got something similar that didn't cost as much knowing now that i would only just wear it as a waist belt the next disappointing item in my worst category is something that i'm actually wearing these pearl dior earrings i actually put them on because i remembered that i had them and i wanted to put them in this video but the issue is these dior earrings are not the cheapest they're not made out of real pearls and considering how much they are and how much wear i get out of them i just don't think they are worth it when i just got them i used to wear them a lot especially when these just came out i forgot the name of them but dior every year keeps coming out with like similar styles where they add little charms and danglers that hang off of them which i think are super super cute and i'm so tempted to buy but i just remind myself in that moment every time that i already have these these ones and these ones are way more classic than the more trendy ones that came out recently and I don't wear them as much as I would like to so if you do like the style of pearl earring but you don't want to spend a lot of money on the Dior ones you actually could get these cheaper on a resale website like the real real or you can go on a website like Bobble Bar and get a dupe that looks just like this for a fraction of the cost and without any of the regret. The last disappointing item that I wanted to include in my worst category is actually an item that I sold recently. Several years ago, I purchased a gently used Hermes wallet for that classic a long wallet that kind of folds out like this and it has like a strap that goes through the little h logo and although 
that wallet was incredible quality and I used it for a good two or three years and it was in really, really great condition. I just felt like it was too bulky. It didn't fit in majority of my purses. It took up way too much space. It was just way too much money for what it was. So that's why I decided to sell it because I haven't been using it for the last few years because I got a new wallet, which I will show you in just a second. But I just wanted to put it out there for any of you who are looking at the Hermes wallet and thinking about getting it. I just wanted to let you guys know that for me personally, I didn't find it to be the most convenient type of way to carry all of my credit cards and money and receipts and all that kind of stuff. I'm a lot more minimal. So if you're like me and you like to carry the minimum amount of items in your wallet, I would not recommend that wallet. Okay, so I only had five items for my worst category, but for my best category, I have six items that I wanted to talk about. And since I left off on the Hermes wallet situation, I wanted to talk to you about one of my best purchases ever. I'm so obsessed with it and I've had it for probably two or three years and that is my little Chanel wallet. It's super sleek and compact. I love the black uh, shiny patent leather on it. It's super easy just to throw in all of my essentials. I actually never carry cash. It's very very rare for me to use cash because majority of the places that I go to nowadays they always accept credit card and I would rather pay with credit cards. So I don't need a change purse. I don't need an area for all of my bills. I just need an organizer for all of my cards and my receipts and this does the job for me it is a perfect size it's really small and compact and i can fit this into virtually every single handbag that i own so if you guys are looking for a new wallet and you are like me you're very minimal and all you need to carry around with you are your cards and receipts then maybe something like this would be a good option for you. The next item on my best list is actually something that I purchased recently and I'm so obsessed with it and I am so excited for fall to come around. I never would have thought that I would be so excited for colder weather to come, but literally one of the main reasons I'm excited for the cold weather to come back is so that I can bring out this beautiful Burberry trench coat. So this is a vintage Burberry trench coat that I picked up from a luxury consignment store here in Toronto. It's called VSP Consignment. It is not sponsored by VSP Consignment. I just recently discovered them by accident and they actually have such a beautiful collection of vintage items that are in pristine condition. And when I saw this, I was in shock. It was such a good deal. This is in pretty much perfect condition. It does need a little bit of a steaming, but I was looking for this exact Burberry trench coat on the vintage market for such a long time. So I'm so happy that I was able to find it on VSP consignment. And this is a classic that you will have in your wardrobe for literally Ever. Another thing I love about this is that this particular version has a wool vest insert that you can zip into it so you can wear it on those days when it is super chilly outside and you can wear it just like this without the wool vest insert on warmer spring days. So I love how it's very versatile. It's a classic color and it literally goes with everything. The next item on my best luxury designer purchases list are my Christian Louboutin Bagals. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I've mentioned these in a plethora of videos. I've also used them in a lot of styling videos, so I cannot rave about them enough. If you guys are looking for a classic pump that will last you years and years and years, and if they're comfortable for you, which Christian Louboutins, especially the Pagal style, are actually very comfortable for me in comparison to other high heels on the market, then I would highly recommend the Christian Louboutin Pagals, specifically in the nude shade and the black shade because they're super versatile. They literally go with everything. I think I already have like maybe five or six pairs of different kinds of Pagals and I still wear my nude and my black ones the most. So I cannot recommend them enough. They will always be a favorite. So if you guys are interested in checking them out or if you're interested in checking any thing out in this video, then I will link everything down below. Another one of my best luxury designer shoe purchases are these pair of white 
Louis Vuitton sneakers. I cannot tell you how much wear I got out of them. If you follow me over on Instagram, you would know it. There's just something about a classic pair of white sneakers that really adds a freshness and a cool vibe to an outfit that nothing else can really do. These are also really comfortable. They're super versatile. I can wear them with pretty much anything and everything and that's why they are a staple in my closet so if you guys are looking for a good pair of classic white sneakers i'd highly recommend these ones the next item in my best category is my louis vuitton keep all i've mentioned this on my channel several times before this is another item that i got on the vintage market i think i got it from lr and co i don't remember exactly the name of the consignment store but i will link it down below if you guys are interested in checking them out they always have a huge selection of key balls at a very very affordable price in all different types of conditions so you can really find a keep all that is in the condition that you like it in and pay a price that is very very competitive i personally like when the key balls look like they are very aged and look like they have personality and character and have been loved and used so i didn't mind that this one had a little bit more wear and tear on it than another one and since i've got it this has has been my go-to carry-all it literally fits everything so i would highly highly recommend it if you guys are looking into it and i'm pretty sure i have the 50 size and the last luxury designer purchase in my best category is my chanel backpack now this is not the only chanel backpack that i own i think i own three chanel backpacks in total and they're hands down my favorite style of bag to wear they're just so easy to throw on they instantly make any outfit look so much more effortless and so much more cool i love this nude one because it literally goes with everything and it's the perfect size for me this is the smaller urban spirit uh, backpack with the chevron quilting which i love because it looks a little bit more dressier and because it is the smaller version you can also carry it around like a smaller purse if you're going out somewhere in the evening Evening. so i like that this one is super versatile whereas my larger Ur urban spirit uh, backpack it's more of a daytime backpack i would say so if you guys are in the market for a high-end backpack then that's something for you guys to consider but i am obsessed with them i love backpacks especially if you get them in a classic color i feel like you will have them for years and years and years and you can wear them with anything and everything and backpacks have been around for such a long time even the vintage ones look so so cool so again if you are interested in checking out anything that i mentioned in this video i'll link whatever i can in my description box down below and also link any alternative options because i know the real real carries so many beautiful vintage chanel backpacks that are the fraction of the cost all right, you guys, so that wraps up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out Vincero watches in my description box down below to check out their beautiful, luxurious, and affordable watches if you are in the market for a beautiful timepiece. I cannot recommend them enough. As always, if you have any requests for videos that you'd like to see on this channel, leave them for me in the comments down below. And if you have any best or worst luxury designer purchases that you have a very strong opinion on, leave it for me in the comments below always curious to know what you guys think about certain items and it's going to help anyone else that happens to read the comments so that is always amazing as always i want to thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me and i'll see you in my next one